Okay, so if it's perfect now, so we can continue. So uh, what I was saying is thank you for the introduction, for the brief introduction. I'm very happy to, to be here today. Uh, as I was saying, I did not hear everything uh, said with that. So I will just try as much as possible to, to answer. So uh, I think the first question was about uh, telling, uh, telling who served me as uh, my greatest inspiration for believing that it was possible. Um, uh, okay, that question is a very interesting question because the person who has been my great inspiration, I had, I had two inspirations in my life. And the first inspiration was my mom, and then the second inspiration was my uh, my mentor. But to to make it short, uh, my mom had to like to raise me alone. So that is why she was my inspiration because she did it. It was not easy to raise a child because my mom and I are having we have like 14 years old difference. So you can imagine what it is and uh, she uh, could make it and raise me up to my secondary school and that was already for me for me she was a, a super hero so uh, i took that as an inspiration because she did it and i thought okay if my mom did it i am able to do anything so i gave myself uh, to school i was really uh, motivated uh, passionate about uh, success in school and uh, at that time i was like thinking of doing something like astronomy or medicine that th th those were the, th the two things that were hitting my head and i was very good in mathematics but actually i came to reality and said okay let me concentrate in, in medicine saving people and uh, that's how it went so uh, for the small story uh, the, the, the difficulties i started facing were uh, uh, faced back in my country, my native Cameroon, where I, uh, for, for example, in Cameroon to get into med school, you need to write an exam, you need to write a, a national exam. And uh, I wrote the, the national exam twice. Uh, the first time I, I was admissible, but I did not succeed because of funds. And then the second time I passed, and uh, actually it was interesting. And a little bit of reality in our African country is corruption. So uh, they called my mom, telling her that I have to be, I have to pay a certain amount of money for them to accept me in the school. And uh, she was not having that money, and she was like, "I don't have that." So uh, actually, since it was corruption and it was not official, uh, I continued my school. I started my medical school normally in Cameroon. Medical, medical school in Cameroon is uh, seven years. So I was able to go into five, I did my five years in Cameroon, five medical years completely. Uh, I entered in sixth year. And actually in the second semester of sixth year, we are supposed to already be able to, to write the national exam uh, that gives you the right to, to go in for your thesis. Like, that's it. And, uh, Okay, 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 okay. So I was just reading Fred. Thank you so much. So uh, I was saying that I went to fit here. I finished my fit here. I entered in sit here. And uh, during my sit here is uh, usually we are going to the hospital preparing for our uh, national exam. So uh, at the preparation of the national exam, uh, like six months to the exam, uh, my name was not in the list of the students who are supposed to write the exam. So that, that's where my problems uh, really started because I had to like start thinking, why isn't my name is not there? I have everything proving. And uh, the same guy who called my mom six years ago, uh, recalled her and told her, I told you if you don't pay, your, 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 your son will never be a medical doctor in this country. And uh, that is where everything started. I tried to make complaints. I went to the Ministry of, uh, of Public Health and the Ministry of Higher Education in our country. And uh, just imagine I arrived there and my matricule number of student has been changed to someone else's name. So I had no proof that I was a student except from my receipts of payment. And on the receipts of payment, you don't have anything about apart from your name. So they were like, 
it's not sure you are doing anything we are seeing here another name in the data and uh, it was kind of uh, weird really weird because i depressed a lot that time because i uh, for, for me to be able to cope with medical school i had to i had to be a musical teacher i had to be uh, a home teacher i had to to be a swimming instructor i, I did so many things to be able to cope uh, with my uh, school allowance so it was so deceitful for me at that time and uh, i was like okay i'll give up i don't know what i have to do again i was really uh, depressed and uh, that is where i met my mentor uh, dr ulrich sydney to whom i say big thanks i i met him how i went into uh, uh, into internet and uh, i was since i was passionate about uh, uh, neurosurgery because i want to do neurosurgery further uh, i entered in the association of uh, future african neurosurgeons and in this association i had the the pleasure to meet my mentor with whom i discussed and uh, we kind of founded that association and when i discussed with him he told me no nothing is over you can always go somewhere else and try to to start at fresh and i was like it was very difficult for me to accept the fact that i have to go back somewhere and maybe start at fresh like six more years of medical school but that did not stop me at all uh, i had a friend then who was in russia and we discussed i told him okay this is what is happening to me in cameroon and he told me why not coming to russia and i was like oh russia i heard that russia there uh, it's very difficult for black skinned people uh, there is so racist uh, the language is so difficult and the guy was like if i made it you can make it so uh, all what you're saying is true but you can make it so that is how i had the the, the, the grace he heard me doing my invitation coming to russia i came to russia and when I came, I fixed myself objectives. And my first objective, and I arrived in Russia, it was on something like February uh, or beginning March. And I gave myself the, 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 the task to be able to learn the language in three months. So I came and in three months, I could already have a free discussion in Russian, although I was not getting a hundred percent but i could express myself and see what i think and understand other people so i had to to be able to do that i was going to the to the the what that opening faculty how do we call it in english uh preparatory faculty i went to the preparatory faculty for the la for the language uh, normally it was supposed to be three hours a day uh, but i was going there from 7 a.m to 7 p.m so you can imagine that's what i was doing every day from monday to sunday and when i got sufficient experience in the language it was now time for me to know about how to go to med school so my friend also helped me and he was like okay i'll try to to see in the med school try to see what to do and i went to the med school and uh, in med school, uh, they told me I have to start back at fresh, like really at fresh. They don't want to hear anything. And that is where it became difficult to accept because that was already the reality. I had to accept that. And uh, I discussed with my mentor, Dr. Ulrich, and he was like, no, that's good. It's, it's, it's not a problem because I was looking at the age. I was looking at the time. And he was like, every time encouraging me, telling me he gave me his own history, how he was uh chased out from cameroon because he's a cameroonian as well and he did his medical school in congo and actually now he's in harvard uh he's a graduate of harvard so you can imagine how they he, he moved so that is how he, he could encourage me tell me that okay this is not a bad thing just uh find your place and work hard and show them that you marry the place they're giving you so i got into first year actually it was good uh the first year was the first semester was very 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 difficult and then from the second semester i started acclimating myself like the accommodation was becoming a little bit easier because i knew already the language a little bit better than when i came and from there i could prove that okay i've done medical school 
with my teachers i was always discussing always asking some specific questions like okay no in my country they do like this and that and that and that called upon the attention of one of my of my teacher who was the head of department of internal medicine and she was like uh why is it that you know all these things in advance uh is it because are you reading it are you all like over reading because i know russian is difficult even the russians themselves don't have that kind of uh, awakeness how do you do so that's where i explained her everything i just threw everything to her like this is my story and she was like wow so she helped me to go to see the dean we went to the dean office we discussed with the dean and the dean looked out through my uh my transcript and she was like wow you've almost done everything you're finished but unfortunately we cannot put you at a higher level so they tried to arrange me because in russia it's six years of medical school so they kind of arranged me and uh, put me in third year that that was i was in first year and first year first semester and then i found myself doing the second semester in third year so that is what happened that that's my small story and they helped me like that and uh, since then i've been very active in all what is happening in school and uh, till then i finished with my medical school uh, last year and we will come back to what happened with the medical school that was just a little bit of the story how it went now we will talk about it in the difficulties because i think there was a question that was uh, asking about uh, what journey i've experienced transforming from my high school into my tertiary education i've answered that already in, in together so uh, maybe the other question was the challenges that i had to overcome those are that is where everything starts now the first challenge was uh, depression because it was it's not easy for someone to have almost finished like you are to one year of ending your uh, a, a, a very long uh, cycle that is seven years and go again and start it back but it's possible uh it was not that evident for me the first time to accept it but i understood that time does not control us we are the one putting pressure on ourselves because uh there is uh, someone who uh, uh said i forgot i've not noted the name but is uh Kilimbi. he said he's not the name is not Kilimbi. he's just using someone else and i was very attentive when he said uh, i graduated in 2019 but i've not yet started university i'm doing something else that it makes something in my mind because uh most of the people will be like oh i finished school since uh yes benjamin thank you i finished school since 2019 and i have to start university very fast if i don't start university my life will not be a success no success does not depend on what other people did success depends on your own programmation and what you have programmed so that was my very first challenge to understand that my success depends on me on, on what I have planned in my timeline. That is that was my first challenge. But with the help of a, of a good mentoring, that is of my mentor, I could understand that, okay, no, you don't need to, to stress up, but instead you need to prepare material for the future. And that is what uh, uh, I did. Now, the next thing was the language, yes. To be sincere, Russian language is very, very difficult. It's, uh, rest, when I was coming, it was classified as the third strongest difficult language in the world. So just imagine, it's very difficult. Even the Russians have problems with their language. So it's, that was a very big barrier, but we overcome this barrier with uh, just a little bit of discipline because you have to understand that when you arrive somewhere and you are able to speak the language of that place, people consider you because they they consider that you have done an extra effort, even if you are not at a hundred percent top in the language, even if you do errors. But when you speak, someone can understand what you want to say. They are very very pleased with that, and that is something that helped me a lot in all my journey in Russia because. 
I was distinguishing myself by the fact that I was speaking the language. I could enter, even if I don't know well, I would say, okay, please, despite the fact that I don't speak well, can you please help me to do this? I know maybe this is not how they say it. Uh, can you correct me? And that is how it was going. I was not afraid to enter in any office to ask something. So that was another challenge, learning the language. And I, uh, fortunately for me, I understood it immediately when I arrived because uh, I have vision. I need to know the language. So I invested myself like deeply in the language. I did even extra uh, studies just for me to be like doing the language, discussing with people all the time. Uh, the third thing was the finance. That is the part that people usually ask. So the, the, the third thing was finance. I have to tell you that I did not come in Russia with a scholarship, although there are many scholarships in Russia to sincere. Yeah, many scholarships, but I did not come in a scholarship. The first reason why I could not come in the scholarship is because most of the scholarships are granted from your Ministry of Higher Education. Most of the scholarships, uh, Africa, Russian scholarships are granted mostly from uh, your Ministry of Higher Education. So since uh, my, my studies has been biased already by someone working in the Ministry of Higher Education, you can imagine that it was not possible for me to apply for those scholarships because, by the way, he will have seen again my name and just block everything. So I did not apply for scholarship, but I had people that helped me. So first thing first, uh, when I arrived in, in, uh, 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 in Russia, for my first two years, I had already sufficient amount of money that will cover for those two years. And after that, uh, I started searching for small jobs and uh, it hurt me as well. And the third thing is I discussed with my school and I proposed them to allow me to school because I wanted knowledge. And then after that, I would be repaying back before leaving or before collecting my diploma. That is why for the day of today, I'm a medical doctor that is already almost eight months. Five, yeah, almost eight months. And uh, I haven't gotten my diploma. Why? Because I am still on a loan that I'm paying gradually. But this has been possible just because I've been very active in school. I've been doing so much volunteer work, so many. I've been volunteering in anything that they was asking for help, even though I knew I'm not a native, I was volunteer because I was preparing to ask for that loan. And this is, uh, this is a, 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 an advice that my mentor gave me because we were checking out, okay, how can I pay school fees? And actually, I have to add the fact that uh, Russia is one of the countries where the school fees is a little bit uh, accessible than the other uh, European countries, if I have to say it like that. Most of the European countries are very expensive. Uh, England, for example, is very, very, very so much expensive. And uh, it's true they have many scholarships, but the scholarships also are competitive. So. Uh, those are some of the, the challenges I faced a lot. And the, maybe the last challenge that we usually forget is uh, the climate. The climate. That is, Russia is known to be extremely, excessively cold. So there are regions where it's not really cold, but there are other regions like mine where you have minus 30, minus 40, minus 50, and you have to leave. So those are those are those are some of the challenges, for example, that uh, I, I had through through my journey. Mm, I don't know if I answered all the questions. Uh, now maybe it will be the opportunities available on my site. I think. I think. I think that is it. So uh, concerning the opportunities available in my site in, in Russia.